What up, friends? Thank you for hanging. I uh, just wanted to put some quick thoughts out about all this talk about UFC champions versus Bellator champions. Now, a lot of the time we started this debate or discussion like this and it creates conflict, it creates controversy. And in media, I think that's what people want. You know, the media rewards conflict and controversy. I'm trying to take that aside and just discuss some of the mechanisms at play. So right now, there are people debating whether Vadim Nemkov, the Bellator light heavyweight champion, is better or as good as, say, Dominic Reyes, who will be probably fighting for the UFC light heavyweight championship, etc., etc. With every single one of these weight classes, this debate is going on. Couple thoughts first. That just the fact that this debate is happening is a, is a win for Bellator. This debate didn't exist six months ago. It certainly didn't exist two years ago. Now it does. That is a testament to the growth of Bellator. Um, but I'm going to try to be impartial. And I feel like I'm a rare example of someone who can be impartial, myself, and Chael Pisana. Why do I think the two of us can? We're two of a very tiny handful of people that get to work for both companies or work to cover both companies. I analyze and do post-fight analysis and, and build build uh, videos and a ton of stuff for TSN in Canada on the UFC. I also analyze Bellator for Bellator in a number of different settings. And if we're going to look at the bias, human bias, even a step further, I've been about 50-50 since uh, March. UFC came back, gave me a ton of work covering that, and now Bellator is back, there's a ton of work. So in my life, I get to do both, and I hope that gives me the unique insight to try to look at this in an unbiased way. So I'd like to look at the mechanics underneath the hood. Open up the hood and see what's going on in there. Um, because a lot of time we can get trapped in very, very one-dimensional thinking. That's why we all have the same conversations over and over again. Fighter wins, is see the greatest of all time. What's next for him? Uh, striker versus grappler, is this guy better than this guy? We, we get trapped in certain narratives. So I'm trying to go behind these narratives. Speaking of narratives, there's a very, when you work closely, there's very big differences between these two companies. The, why did I say that that's a, a credit to Bellator that this conversation is happening? Because they are much smaller than the UFC. I think we all know that. I don't think I'm speaking out of t a turn or overly insulting one or overly complimenting the other to say that the UFC probably is at least 80%, maybe more, of all the global Global, maybe not, but, but at least in North America and in the English-speaking part of the world, it's got to be at least 80% of all of the fighting that is discussed or shared or, or talked about or watched. It's probably the UFC. Now, Bellator, being smaller, there are some advantages to being smaller, and then there are huge advantages to being bigger. And one of the big ones, and this is part of the mechanism at play, why I can't just say this guy is better, this guy isn't, well, he beat these guys, he didn't beat these, what about this? And I know that is part of the fun of the, com of the conversation. But we must identify some of the truths, some of the, some of the aspects that, that maybe we don't talk about. For example, when you are the biggest, you have, if you w walk into a store and the biggest chocolate bars or the biggest beers or the biggest anything will have the most shelf space. You see it the most. The UFC has the most virtual shelf space. They have the, the biggest uh, voice. They control the narrative. You know things that Dana White says, that Joe Rogan says, that any of us that do coverage of the UFC says. You hear them over and over. Fastest going sport in the world, all of these things, you know, uh, the greatest athletes, whatever we say, over and over and over again. So we control the narrative. So these two brands, one very big, one much smaller, the narratives you hear, if you just hear in passing and you're a general consumer, you automatically assume the UFC is bigger, I know a lot more about them, therefore they must have the best fighters. There is some truth to it many different times how and why they would have the best fighters. This is also big. Because of that voice, that presence, when you're a young kid, you grow up, your dream could be, I want to one day fight in the UFC. That's big. That's powerful. Right? So you can, as a result, attract some great young fighters. But because many are trying to get noticed, sometimes very easily others can fall through the crack. And there are independent thinkers. A kid like Patrick Mix comes to mind. Patrick Mix will be fighting for the Bellator featherweight uh, title, or bantamweight title, I'm sorry, very, very soon. Uh, from my experience, analyzing tens of thousands of hours of fighting, Patrick Mix could do 
could be in exactly the same position in the UFC or one championship or anywhere on planet Earth. He saw Bellator as a very real route. He became attached to it. And when he came over to it, another one of the advantages of being smaller, he could get a lot more personal attention. He could get treated different. He could, you know, a differentiating business factor of a company like Bellator can be to make sure you treat fighters great, to make sure you create personal relationships with them. Young fighter gets to shake Dana White's hand once is pretty exciting, but a young fighter gets to sit down with the bosses, with the elite, with the high up people at Bellator and discuss his career, that can change your connection to it. So some young, talented fighters can be attracted to Bellator that way. Again, another real credit to Bellator, three years ago, if you're a young fighter, I wanna be in the UFC. Now that is not 100% exclusive. There are young fighters, Ireland, Scotland, uh, Northern Ireland, England, Wales, over there, Bellator's presence is quite large. So they will attract some of those fighters and attract some fighters in North America. So what am I getting at? Well, clearly, if you're the biggest fight show in the world, you may have the largest power to attract. And, and why am I even, hey, why aren't we talking about John Jones versus, versus Vadim Nemkov? It's because those things are subjective. We will also argue the shit out of shit like that, uh, whether we know anything about it or not. You can watch seven fights in your life, never trained in martial arts, don't know much about it, but God damn it, you know John Jones is better than that guy, right? But your certainty is the problem. And you will, your certainty will become a little bit, you know, more dimensional. You'll allow yourself to think more dimensionally if you go to 30,000 feet and say, what are these companies? How do they work? What is a brand? What is an image? What is my perspective and where do I get it? How are these fighters attracted and found? Um, Again, another advantage to being the biggest, if you're the UFC, you will have a much larger amount of fighters, both that are already signed and on your smaller shows that you own, Dana White Contender Series, he's got one, he's got, they've got all these different mechanisms, much larger amount of fighters in there. Bigger the, the crop of fighters, the more access to quality fighters you have. But, and uh, Mick Maynard and Sean Shelby, great matchmakers. There's a downside, and that is they're so busy with so many fighters, they can't look as deeply at any particular amount. Rich Chow, on the other hand, over and Mike Kogan and the team at Bellator, they can look, they can be a little more selective. Who are the fighters in this region? Who is the, the gem in there? What uh, gyms do they have close relationships with? This is another reason you actually could have a much better fighter. You could have the best fighter in Bellator or one or legacy fighting who will come up and sign, be signed either to Bellator or one or the UFC, you can actually find that and Bellator can have some of the best fighters in the world. Why? Because Rich and Kogan and their machine can go and with particular relationships, i.e. the example, the, the big example here, Fedor. They built a relationship with Fedor Emelianenko, one of the greatest, many think the greatest fighter of all time. Fedor has a crop of young fighters that are coming up, including Vadim Nemkov. They didn't even consider going over and pursuing starting at the base level for the base level pay at the UFC and working their way up. When due to that relationship, they could come in, bring uh, Vadim Nemkov. Maybe he's the best light, light heavyweight in the world. He only considered this place because of personal relationships. Smaller company can have more deep personal relationships, right? So there all of a sudden you have that possibility. Doesn't matter who he beat or who this guy beat. We're talking strictly about the raw materials of these martial arts. Artist, Vadim Nemkov only came this route because of a history that he was only attracted to this particular brand. And that's what they are. They're brands. Big brand. Strong brand. Big statement brand. Smaller brand. Boutique brand. You know, uh, people love craft beer and craft sodas and specialty um, you know, handmade chocolates right now. That's, that's in right now. It's also one of the reasons this conversation is starting to happen because we, once upon a time, we wore Nike, we drank Budweiser, we ate uh, tic, tic Tacs and Kit Kats and whatever. You know, we, that's what we did. Now we know that, that through, through that hands-on approach, there are other ways that a small company, a small brand, a small product can also become you know, create something special. So yes, John Jones is in the UFC because the UFC was the brand when he came up and he was special, maybe the best ever. But Vadim Nemkov, you don't know, neither do I, whether he's as good as John Jones, and we may never know. Uh, but he came in a different route, and that was the only route he was coming in because of a relationship with Fedor Emelianenko. 
You also have homegrown, real homegrown fighters that have built their whole careers. Uh, Brock Lesnar comes along. Brock Lesnar wants to be where the big brand is, where the big thing is happening. But, uh, but the Pitbull brothers come up and the, if you right now don't think that the, the, when people are talking about Pitbull versus Volkanovski, if you don't think that that's a real fight, why? Because it's about the athletes, it's not about the brands. It's not about the big powerful brand and the boutique brand. It's about the athletes. If you see who Pitbull is, Patricio Pitbull, where he comes from, how he's formed. If you've watched his fights, and most or many haven't. That's another thing that makes this conversation very, very difficult. Because you've seen Alex Volkanovsky. It is the biggest. It is the one that has reached the most people. It, so we have a recency bias and a frequency bias. And we see, oh, of course, that's the big... No, you, if you want to be the best, you got to be in the UFC. And that is often true. The UFC is awesome. Don't misunderstand me. The UFC is fucking awesome. They have brilliant fighters. They have a large crop of many, and like I said, biggest crop, most access, many young ones come up with the dream of coming there, but that changes over time as well as it becomes challenging and different and the frequency and the recency and how often you see it. As I said, over in Scotland, Ireland, Northern Ireland, even SPG, Straight Blast Gym, John Cavanaugh, great, brilliant coach, he came up coaching uh, Conor McGregor. Something, I don't know what, but something, perhaps that personal relationship, perhaps that ability to be able to sit down and discuss and feel a part of it, the partnership element that you can do with a boutique chocolate or a boutique cookie or a boutique fighting organization. You can build that. So now all or many or most of the Straight Blast Gym out of Ireland and his worldwide fighters fight over in the UFC. And I don't care what you think of, um, you know, Gallagher. Uh, Gallagher's a brilliant fighter. Just because he uh, provokes you doesn't mean he isn't. And he is fighting there because of that relationship. Michael Venom Page over there. I know you don't like Michael Venom Page, but Michael Venom Page is powerful. Chris Cyborg, why would she come there? Again, she goes there because of that ability to have more of a partnership with the smaller boutique brand. Right? You see this happening now. What does this mean? Is John Jones better than Vadim Nemkov? History suggests perhaps he's a little ahead at the very least. But you can see now this idea that we only like the one or we only like the other. As I said, I have the good fortune of covering both. The big, powerful sizzle and the other. That's another element. Dana is brilliant. And Dana don't give a fuck what people think of him. And I love that about him. Uh, when Dana White said, well, could they have the, the best 205 pound division? We, they've got all our guys that we let go. That's one more element to keep in mind. The UFC, the bigger you get, the bigger you need to continue to get. It's the nature of perpetual growth. You know, whether we're McDonald's or Coca-Cola, this, the bigger the company gets, the more growth is required. To grow, we need sizzle. We need, and part of the brand, this powerful brand, sizzle and excitement and, and uh, character and personality and all of that's an element. So if you decide along the way that Phil Davis doesn't have that or you don't see it, and you cut him, he was still the number three or number four guy in the world, or he moves. I mean, Corey, Corey Anderson just left because they couldn't find the right deal. He was the number five guy in the world. So I love you, Dana White. Uh, and I get it. You gotta go and you gotta, this is your gig. This is what you do. And the message is one of the greatest strengths that you have and the greatest strengths the UFC has had and will continue to have. But you can't say, we cut these guys and they're over there. You didn't cut them because of skill. You cut them because of sizzle. And as a result, when you build a company where sizzle is mandatory and you can cut the highly skilled person whose sizzle you don't understand, a quickly add, it's our job. Me, Joe Rogan, it doesn't matter, Big John McCarthy, whatever league and brand you work in, it's our job to let people know Corey Anderson's a genius, create that sizzle in Phil Davis and help him. I know Phil is brilliant. I know how to present that. And I do present that. I would present that if I worked, covered him with the UFC, and I'll present that if I cover him with Bellator. That's our job. So who's the best UFC or Bellator? Whose fighters are the best? It ain't about the leagues. It ain't about the brands. It ain't about the sizzle. It ain't about the narrative. It ain't about which one you know more about. It's about the martial artists, and they are not trained at the UFC or Bellator either, by the way. So don't give the UFC credit or Bellator credit. The best fighters in the world are the best martial artists in the world, regardless of brands. I'm gonna sign off at 15 minutes, and this has been a real fun thing to do.
Thank you, my friends. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. And enjoy the hostilities.